So what's going on guys? I am Black Ops Amazing. Welcome back to another Zombies video where today I thought we'd take a look at the story of Alcatraz or Mob of the Dead, but not the story in Zombies, but the actual escape that happened in real life. Because of course this has influence on the zombie storyline. If this escape never happened in real life, then maybe Mob of the Dead would never have gone on to be a map in zombies. So I think it'll be interesting to take a look at this. For any of you guys who don't know about it already, hopefully you enjoy the video. If you do, a like creator as always would be very much appreciated. Make sure you are subscribed to stay up to date with the latest zombies videos on the channel and also click the bell notification icon next to it as well. But with that out of the way, without further ado, Let's get into it. So if you want to check out the actual Mob of the Dead storyline, I have done a full video on that. I will link it down in the description. But today we are taking a look at the real life escape that Mob of the Dead is based on, which happened on June the 11th of 1962. If there was ever an inmate that was destined to escape from Alcatraz, it was Frank Lee. Maurice. Maurice had spent most of his lifetime navigating the prison system before his arrival at Alcatraz. From his infant years till his teens, Maurice was shuffled from one foster home to another. And after he was convicted of his first crime at the age of just 13, by the time he reached his later teens, Maurice's criminal record would include a multitude of crimes ranging from neurotics possession to armed robbery, and he had become a professional inhabitant of the correctional system. He spent his formative years in a boys' training school, and then graduated to a series of ever-larging penitentiaries. Morris was credited by prison officials as possessing superior intelligence, with an IQ of 130, but because of this, this meant that Morris would end up at The Rock on January the 18th of 1960, where he became inmate AZ-1. 441. Frank's accomplices in the Great Escape were equally as acquainted with the dark world of organised crime. Brothers John and Clarence Anglin were also serving sentences on Alcatraz for bank robbery, having been convicted along with their other brother, Alfred. All three had been incarcerated at the Federal Penitentiary in Atlanta, and that was when they first became acquainted with Morris, but just like him, John and Clarence were eventually sent to Alcatraz following a sequence of escape attempts. Alcatraz inmate Alan West, who occupied an adjacent cell, was also brought into the scheme. He was serving his second term on the rock and carried a reputation as an arrogant criminal. And he already knew John Anglin from the state penitentiary in Florida. But after all four inmates were gathered together, the escape plan started to take shape in December of 1961. They began by collecting old saw blades that West allegedly found in one of the utility corridors whilst cleaning. The plan was extremely complex and involved the design and fabrication of ingenious lifelike dummies, water rafts, and life jackets fashioned from over 50 raincoats that had been acquired from other inmates, some donated and some stolen. They would also require a variety of crudely made tools to dig with and to construct the accessories necessary for the escape. By May of 1962, using these tools of saw blades and spoons, over the next six months they used these to gradually widen the ventilation duct openings in their cell walls. And they hid the hole in the wall using cardboard and paint. Using paper from magazines and newspapers, they created paper mache and then used this to create exact replicas of the vents. They then painted them the same colour as the walls and then taped them over the hole to make it look like nothing was ever there. The widened holes that they had created opened into an unguarded utility corridor behind the cell tier and from the corridor they climbed up using the pipes to the roof of their cell block where they set up a small workshop. And it was here where Maurice would move on to the next step of his plan. The Anglin brothers inhabited adjacent cells, just like Weston Morris did. And so the inmates alternated shifts, with one working and the other one on the lookout. They would start work at around 5.30pm and continue till 9pm, just prior to the count at Lights Out. Meanwhile, John and Clarence started to fabricate the dummy heads, and even gave them their names Oink and Oscar. The heads were crude but lifelike, and were constructed from a homemade cement powder mixture that included materials like soap and toilet paper. They were then decorated with a flesh tone paint from the prison art kits, and human hair from the barber's shop. Also, using glue stolen from the glove shop, the inmates then started working to cut and bond the raincoats that they stole into a makeshift raft 
and life jackets. Each evening following the completion of their self-imposed work detail, they would hide the materials on the top of their cell block in which they could access through the holes that they created in their cells to minimize their chance of being caught with the materials. The inmates also acquired an elaborate array of handmade tools. West was able to steal an electric hair clipper while working on a paint detail in the barber shop, along with a drill bit that was stolen by other inmates to fashion a makeshift motorized drill. However, the motor proved to be too small, and so the project would require more effective equipment. By the stroke of good luck, West had recently learned that the prison's vacuum had broken, and he was permitted to repair it, in which inspecting the machine, he found that it had two motors. West carefully removed one and was able to get the other one working. And so, Morris and the Anglin brothers were then able to use the vacuum motor for their drill. Where, going back through the holes in their cells, climbing up the pipes to the roof of their cell block, they attempted to drill out the ventilator in the roof. But with only limited success, the motor proved to be too noisy and was just not very effective. But after months of long preparation, the inmates had completed fashioning all of the gear they needed for their escape and so they continued working to loosen the ventilator grill on the top of the cell house. John Angling carefully completed the valve assembly on the large 6 by 14 foot raft they created, while Maurice modified an accordion-like musical instrument called a concertina, which would be used to rapidly inflate the raft. But during this time, still, not all of the holes in the walls were completed. Whilst everyone else had progressed, West had fallen behind, since his primary role had been to construct the life jackets, and the special wooden paddles made out of old wood for the raft. This meant that he didn't have as much time as the others to dig out the hole in his wall. And on the night of June 11th, 1962, Morris finally had the top ventilator loose enough, and he felt that they were ready to attempt the escape. At 9.30 p.m., immediately after lights out, Morris brought down the dummies from the top of the cell block and announced that the escape would be staged that very night. They placed the dummy heads onto the bed, stuffed the covers with pillows to make it look like somebody was sleeping there, and then exactly at 9.30, crawled out of their cells through the holes and covered them up using the cardboard vents they had created. But one inmate that didn't make it out was West. Since the hole in his wall wasn't big enough for him to fit in, he was left behind. The other three inmates for the final time climbed to the top of their cell block. Since the gap in the roof ventilation was now big enough, they climbed through it, where they climbed up through the ventilation shaft onto the roof. When on the roof, the three then dragged their gear along with them across the roof and then descended 50 foot down to the ground by sliding down a kitchen vent pipe along the side of the prison building. Once on the ground, they then had to climb two 12 foot barbed wire fences at the northeast shoreline near the power plant, which was a blind spot in the prison's network of searchlights and gun towers. And then at the shoreline of the island, they inflated their raft with the concertina and then departed off the island in the dense fog towards their objective, which was Angel Island, two miles to the north. And that was the last time that the three inmates were ever seen. Meanwhile, West, who was still in his cell, had finally, after trying, he was able to completely remove the grill and climb out through his cell to the rooftop. But by then, the other three were gone. With no raft and no means of escape, he had no other option but to return to his cell. Due to their successful dummy head ruse, the escape wasn't discovered until the morning of June 12th, 1962, in which by then, the inmates were long gone. An extensive air, sea and land search involving multiple military and law enforcement agencies was conducted over the next 10 days. On June the 14th, a Coast Guard cutter picked up a paddle floating about 200 yards off the shoreline of Angel Island. On the same day in the same general location, workers on another boat found a wallet wrapped in plastic containing names, addresses and photos of the Angelins' friends and relatives. And on June the 21st, shreds of rain coat material believed to be remnants of the raft were found on Angel Island Beach. And the following day, a prison boat picked up a deflated life jacket made from the same material 50 yards off Alcatraz Island. FBI investigators concluded that while it was theoretically possible for one or more of the inmates to have reached Angel Island, the frigid water temperatures and strong currents within the bay made it unlikely. And so, although the inmates were never found, they were presumed 
to have drowned. And the FBI finally closed its file on December 31st of 1979, after 17 years of investigation. Although their official finding was that the prisoners most likely drowned in the cold waters, no one for sure really knows ever what happened to them. And that is the official story of the Alcatraz escape. That is what Mob of the Dead is based off. Without that, I don't think Mob of the Dead would be the same or maybe never made. But hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you have, a like rating would be very much appreciated. Of course, there are some similarities here between our four inmates attempting to escape off Alcatraz. These four, of course, are Sal, Billy, Finn, and Al, where they use makeshift weapons to escape out of their cells, steal the warden's keys, and then build a makeshift plane on the rooftop to escape off the island. But of course, that all happens in purgatory. In reality, they escaped from their cells, but once doing this, they had no plan, and so ended up luring Arlington to the rooftop where they killed him, and then the other three inmates were sentenced to death by electric chair. But there we go. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments section below. If you have enjoyed the video, a like rating would be very much appreciated. But of course, you don't have to if you don't want to. Make sure you are subscribed to stay up to date with the latest Summers videos and click the notification icon next to it as well. Thank you for watching, and I will see you all in the next video. Until next time, goodbye.